Naomi Osaka's decision to quit the French Open in 2021, having been fined by organizers for her refusal to attend media conferences, sparked widespread conversation about mental health in sport. In her withdrawal statement, Osaka revealed she had endured long bouts of depression since her US Open triumph in 2018 and regularly used coping mechanisms for social anxiety, which explains why media conferences might have made her feel uncomfortable. While the top players these days have a large entourage, tennis can still feel like a very lonely sport. So it begs the question, are these psychological struggles a new phenomenon, or have they just stayed hidden for a long time? One answer may come from how professional sport has evolved in recent decades. In tennis, dominant champions in both the women's and men's games have raised the bar and forced those who wish to compete with them to train for longer and with greater intensity than before. Relentless discipline is increasingly required, piling on the pressure to play at 100%, even when not feeling 100%. Advances in sports science, nutrition and medicine have all ensured that modern players' bodies function like well-oiled machines. But perhaps the most crucial cog of this machine when it comes to on-court performance is the mind. Of course, the top players can afford the services of world-class sports psychologists, but with only 3% of female pros and fewer than 2% of male players actually turning a profit, this is rare. And without that support, the brain is left to process external pressures and internal self-doubt on its own, which is when anxiety can kick in. Osaka may have started the discussion around mental health in tennis, but she is far from the first to experience its detrimental effects. Yannick Noah, Pat Cash, Serena Williams, Benoit Paire, Dominic Thiem and Nick Kyrgios have all spoken of suffering mental health-related issues stemming from the pressure of tennis as has Robin Soderling. He played his last professional match, winning the Swedish Open title in 2011, just 13 months after reaching the second of his two French Open finals. The world number five's sudden disappearance from the tour was due to a lingering bout of mononucleosis, or glandular fever, but he later put the career-ending illness down to a private battle with anxiety and panic attacks. I always felt like I was under pressure, Soderling said in 2022, the better I became, the worse it got. When I won, it was more of a relief. When I lost, it was a disaster. Losing a tennis match made me feel like a terrible person. My entire immune system was bad because of the mental stress I put on myself. Even on my rest days, I was never switched off. Then my body just tipped over. I went from being able to play a five-set match on clay to not being able to walk up the stairs but I couldn't really talk to many people about it because there was such a big stigma. Mardi Fish can empathize. He pulled out of the 2012 US Open with an anxiety attack prior to a fourth round match with Roger Federer. I was feeling terrible at that time and not really aware of what was going on, he said a few years later. I hadn't sought help at that point. Fish, it transpired, had anxiety disorder. At one stage, he felt unable to leave his house for three months while the physical manifestations included an irregular heartbeat. He also believes many other players are experiencing varying degrees of mental health issues. There's a ton of guys in the locker room I'm sure that have trouble with it, he said. I've spoken to some male and female players about it privately. Maybe they're just not comfortable with cameras on them talking about it. That is certainly supported by a study from the University of Birmingham in England which analyzed player stories on the Behind the Racket platform to assess how the sport has impacted their mental health. Using 65 professional players from levels, from Grand Slam winners to those outside the top 100, the research was modeled on Abraham Maslow's concept of the hierarchy of human needs. As a classic theory of motivation, Maslow posited that four basic sets of needs – physiological, safety, love and belonging, and esteem – must be satisfied for individuals to be motivated to reach maximum human potential, or self-actualization. The Birmingham Studies anonymized findings confirm the notion that elite sporting environments consist of a range of competitive, organizational, and personal stressors. Specifically, pro tennis players said they struggle with the weight of expectation, 
the financial imbalance of the professional system, the social and psychological impact of living a nomadic existence, and physical and mental fatigue. One renowned active female player, formerly in the top five, spoke of the need to keep playing through the pain barrier to protect your ranking and status. She wrote, A severe wrist problem came and I tried to avoid surgery while playing for nine months. I finally decided to get it done. I was out for about six months and my ranking dropped to 350. Tennis is super difficult because you never stay where you are. An American male player admitted finding the pressure to succeed difficult to handle. He said, To let down the people closest to me, my friends and family, is my most daunting fear. From an early age I was aware of how many lives I affected, how many people had to sacrifice time, energy and money. The idea that it may not be worth it, or there might not be a way to repay them, haunts me at times. A former Wimbledon boys singles champion said, the sport has a way of making you feel irrelevant, with the likelihood of losing every week and the forever expanding field of players, chances are if you are once talk of the town, that will quickly diminish over time. And to emphasize the tough nature of elite sport, an American female player who had experienced depression on tour for years said, it can be difficult to show vulnerability in such a competitive, high stakes profession. At the tip of the pyramid, the study showed that 15% of participants had experienced symptoms of mental illness while on tour. These included panic attacks, anxiety and depression. It's clear that players' psychological needs are not being met, which brings with it an alarming risk. And with more awareness of mental health issues and growing confidence in speaking out, we may see more instances of players taking time away from the game. Those in charge of the sport must ensure professional environments care for players on physical, safety, social and psychological levels.